Time to make the bed. Dee and Bonnie are watching Tyson for me while I get ready. So let's change. So we stayed at another Cracker Barrel last night, except this one is right next to the highway. So there was a little bit of road noise, but honestly, like at nighttime, it wasn't so bad. Maybe this morning I heard a bit of a hum, but I find like background noise, especially if it's like steady like that, is not so bad. This road trip, we've stayed at a lot of Cracker Barrels. We've stayed at a lot of like really nice campgrounds or random boondocking sites too, but uh, Cracker Barrel has been our one constant, reliable place, except for that random bit in Alabama. Today, we've got a fun activity planned, so I can't wait to take you guys along. But first things first, we have to run to Walmart to pick up some things. Phew! Sure is getting hot these days. However, am I going to stay cool? I know. Let's test out this new fan I got. So, thank you to Itahill for sponsoring this video. This is the Itahill portable solar fan that is perfect for your camping needs. It boasts an environmentally friendly, carbon-free, off-grid lifestyle, and you never have to worry about running out of power even when you're outdoors. Because the back of it has a built-in solar panel, meaning you can charge it with the sun while it's in use. As you can see, there are four timer modes and four wind speed settings. I only wish there was a battery indicator, but a fully charged fan will last up to 24 hours on the lowest wind speed setting. This fan has a battery capacity of 10,000 milliamp hours with two ports, a type A and a type C, for charging and discharging simultaneously. You can even use the fan as a portable power bank. You wanna go outside and test this fan? You wanna go outside? Let's go test it. You've got, you spit on my glasses. Let's go outside. Let's go outside. <laughs> Lastly, there are three working angles to adjust your wind direction. The Itahill portable solar fan is perfect for your camping needs, work site needs, personal use, the random power outage, pretty much anywhere that you need a fan. Best part is it's super lightweight and easy to pack away, so I can't wait to take this on my next trip. If you're interested in checking out the Itta Hill solar fan, I do, of course, have a discount code for you. Just click the link in the description box below and go check out Itta Hill. Okay, now back to the video. Hello, adventurers. <laughs> I was going to copy her tagline again, but I already did that for another video. Anyway. We should all do it in three, all together. So today we are at the Old Stone Fort Archaeological State Park. Did I say that right? Almost. Almost right. We're not sure what to expect. We found this place just when we were doing research on where to go and what activity to do. We found this on Google and so we're gonna go check out what this place has to offer. Unfortunately, dogs are not allowed inside the museum. I mean, obviously, typically. So we're gonna check out this view and then uh, wait to see what Dee and Bunny learn. This sign here tells the story of what the Old Storm Fort is. Apparently it's a type of prehistoric Native American mound site. All right, we're right around here-ish. The museum's right under us right now. And we're guessing the ceremonial entrance is here and 
We can walk around here, I guess. We could go down and around or over and around. That way yeah. So the dam we see in front of us was built in 1963, three years before the Old Stone Fort became a Tennessee State Park. This river that we see before us is the Barren Fork or the Big Duck River. And behind us, there's another river behind us that's called the Little Duck River. The two rivers, they meet at the Highland Rim on each side of the Old Stone Fort. And then when they join together, they join right below the Old Stone Fort. Are you about to hug another tree? No. <laughs> Waiting for. Uh... Unexpected surprise of the day, we got to see some waterfalls. Apparently they're called the Blue Hole Falls. We saw that you could climb down there to go on the little island that was kind of there, but it looked like a really steep climb down and I didn't feel like falling. So back on the trail we go to check out the rest of this old stone fort. Now we're off hiking again. Probably. Dee says this must have been one of the parts of the wall. A really cool building, but there's a sign that goes along with it, so let's go learn about it.
treacherous. It's treacherous? Super treacherous. So we're not going to go down that way? No, you have two votes against. Okay, well then let's go up. up oh, they were not kidding. It does look treacherous. <laughs> we didn't go down the treacherous path, but we're continuing onward to check out the big falls. Where are you going, Tyson? Okay, we found a less treacherous way to go down to visit the falls, so this is what we're doing. Lots of little trails that you can take. One that goes kind of the outer rim and then lots of little ones that splinter off to the field. We're on our way to the field. Okay, we found the field. Sorry, Tyson. <laughs> There's a notch built into the wall as it reaches the heights. Built height. So, per that sign over there, we are currently at the highest point of the wall. And for reference, I'll show you what it kind of looks like as best I can. The sign we saw was over there. This mound right here is the wall. And I don't know if you can tell, but there's a trail over there. And you might, well, there were people walking there. So it's hard to tell on camera, I'm sure, but this I think is the wall. And then it's all the way down there. So there were alternate paths we could take if we wanted to take the cool route and go down to the river again. But we decided, as you can see, to walk on the upper rim across the big field to get back to the museum because we have other activities planned for today. And we also have to get to camp. And we haven't eaten yet. So, this is the plan. <laughs> okay, actually, we're gonna go just straight to camp. We were gonna go to um, someplace else, but because it's the weekend, it's possible that it's gonna be crowded. So we just decided we're gonna go to camp. And we're actually gonna go back to the Meriwether Lewis campground. <laughs> um, Bunny and I camped there a few weeks ago, but we're gonna take Dee there. 